Good day from Melbourne. Youth work in Australia has got a long and dignified history. It has been an absolute pleasure to discover the diversity and current state of Australia's youth sector. I invite you to explore the story of Australian youth work with me. Tere tulemast avastama Australia noorsatööd! Historically in Australia youth work has been external and it's been working with marginalised young people. Yeah. Why is that important do you think? Why, why have we gone in that direction of working with young people? I mean other countries like Estonia and um, elsewhere in Europe um, have been working much more in a sort of mainstream sort of way. I think maybe that's because youth workers are more embedded in schools. I mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also maybe in, in Scotland, yeah. I don't know. Um, but also when I worked in the UK, um, youth work sits within education. So um, youth work's run, you know, you don't have state government. So local government um, looks after education and youth work sits within that. So I suppose that's similar to Scotland, whereas that isn't, isn't how um, in Victoria, Australia, right. that's similar. And in fact, we've historically argued that every time there's a change of government, we can tell how they look at youth work mm -hmm. because of where they put it within the ministries yes. and so that for example if it is seen as being an unemployment issue a problem yes. then it's within labor uh, if it's seen as being a community issue or sort of young people are out of charge you know out of control in the community it's put into community or services or something like that but it's constantly been seen as being young people as problems to some extent. The equity word is really important because yeah. it means about not working with those kids who are already advantaged yeah. and putting themselves forward and are skilled yeah. already, but consciously looking at systems to say what is it about what we do and what about other people around us and structures around us do that excludes and marginalises some young people and how can we overcome that? Yeah, and I think youth work led by human rights in, in that context and youth work being around social equity, um, social justice, I think still has strong resonance um, for our work. The other issue about equity, I guess, is the traditional work in um, youth work. And there's been a tension around this, has been as to whether it's worked with those at risk young people, mm -hmm. those people on the margins, or whether it has worked with all young people. And certainly there's been pushes from various state governments to central youth bodies to say you work with all young people out there not rather than at, at risk yeah again how do you is that been something new has that moved over time do you think i think it's not and or or i think it's where the focus is at times depending on what funding's available or um what state you know what the flavor of the state government or the feds are What you can see on the ground around Australia, because I'm involved in a national project at the moment, so I've had the pleasure of visiting every state to know what goes on. We are, you know, we are very lucky in, um, in Victoria for many reasons. We have professional youth work courses. We have institutions and academics who are involved in youth work, involved in the community, which means that there is always a voice around doing youth work. In some other states that doesn't exist, so it means that even multicultural youth work doesn't exist because there's no, there's no framework in which that's based in. Um, so, so, in. so in the other states, I think it is varied. I think that generally the um, mainstream community or your you know local citizen in the community you know if if um, we're running programs in their local community and we talk about issues around the young people we work with they are very interested and um, committed because there is a general belief that young people contribute to the society and they want to make them settle look that's not to say that some people in the community think that you know a lot of migrant refugee young people are a problem and that we're importing problems from overseas that exists but I would say that that exists less than what people think and that I think there is a very loud voice of people who say that but in reality our experience on the ground is that people are very welcoming generally and want to and want to help and support but don't know how to do it. 
So that's where organisations like ours become important because we're often the broker or the vehicle to connect the young person to the community. Often the young person wants to connect and they don't know how because they're new to the country, don't know the systems, don't have the networks, don't know how to link. So we do that and it's vice versa. There's lots of community adult services who say, I want to help but I don't know how to do it either and I don't know how to find young people. And we go, boy, we have hundreds of young people who want to be connected so we try and match them. In terms of social policy, the other thing that worries me too is that as we're getting an ageing population, that young people, we you know, we are going to need to rely on young people more to perform the tasks that need to be done because we're growing older and the profile of who those young people are are not going to be the same as what we've got now because the only way we're getting young people is through migration. We're not, like, our birth rate is, I mean it is increasing but it's quite low so the young people and the families we're getting are culturally diverse and Australia is going to be so much more culturally diverse in 20 years time that we will not recognise ourselves and I don't think that we're prepared for that. We're not prepared at all for what that means for the way industry runs, for the, you know, for the way schools are run, the way services are run, all those kind of things. I think fundamentally we need to change the way we are. So that means that um, we need to think about how we train youth workers to work with young people. One of the challenges for youth work in our sector is getting to explain what youth work is to communities where cultural groups, where they come from countries where youth work doesn't exist. So if you come from a European country, there is some understanding of, you know, there is a profession that works with young people, but a lot of the countries in which we source our migrants and refugees through Asia, the Middle East and Africa, it doesn't exist. So one of the challenges for us has been is how do you legitimise and make this an industry where it's attractive? to young people to want to be involved. Baden Powell was the only successful British general in the Boer War. He successfully defended the siege of Mafeking and he used young people as scouts to run around the town uh, taking messages and communications and so forth. And when he founded his scout movement, he very much um, had in mind uh, preparing young people uh, for military service, to give them the sort of skills that they needed, uh, because the Boer War had found that uh, the, the recruits were very unfit, unhealthy, to the extent that, uh, for instance, they, might, they often had bad teeth. And you needed good teeth in the army because you had to eat hard tack, hard biscuit and, and dried meat and so forth to be able to survive. So, uh, Baden Powell once said that a well-trained scout has the skills of an army sergeant. So he very much had that sort of thing in mind, although the scout movement broadened its uh, aspects and the guide movement uh, moved in rather different directions when that was established. Baden Powell didn't intend to to uh, found the guides, uh, girls turned up to some of his rallies and he was astounded so he got his sister to, to found a movement that would be more appropriate. So, um, so that there was quite a, a significant issue uh, that ran through. Now in that period before the Second World War, um, many of the youth organisations became quite politically involved uh, in issues of world peace. Uh, there were international peace congresses that Australians attended, uh, often significantly th from the YMCA, the YWCA and the Communist Youth League. And those organisations, believe it or not, worked very well together um, to the extent that sometimes there were criticisms from government about the YMCA being puppets of the communists and so forth. Now, that um, uh, led to the establishment of an Australian Youth Council in the late 30s, uh, which the government abolished uh, at the beginning of the war on national security grounds and so forth. So I won't get into a lot of the detail there, but uh, there are, are some important uh, issues that ran through. And it's interesting to note how the Scouts, in association with the Catholic organisations, uh, became part of that very anti-communist movement, which was played out in the youth scene um, as in the political scene in Australia uh, with the uh, split of the Labour Party, uh, with the Democratic uh, Labour Party being the right 
uh, move away on the grounds that the Labour Party wasn't sufficiently anti-communist and, and the whole um, communist uh, abolition referendums that Menzi introduced and, and, and all of that uh, high political stuff was played out in the youth sphere.